Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight to the third of four uh, Democratic Candidates Forum sponsored by Democracy for Monroe County. My name is Chaim Julian, Chairman of Democracy for Monroe County. D DFMC is a grassroots political action committee dedicated to recruiting, training, and supporting fiscally responsible and social pro uh, socially progressive candidates at the local and state levels. We are dedicated to finding these candidates among ordinary citizens who, are, uh, who have been empowered through education, political action, and to participate more in our government at all levels. DFMC is dedicated to instilling into politics a moral influence based on true American values of equal opportunity and justice for all. We act in alliance with the local Democratic Party, organized labor, and other progressive groups for the purpose of promoting policies that will bring a strong community, broad prosperity, effective government, education for all, and a better future. DFMC is part of a nationwide coalition of grassroots, uh, grassroots groups allied with Democracy for America, the political action committee inspired by the 2004 presidential campaign of former Vermont Governor Howard Dean. Grassroots, that is such an important concept. One could say that it is, or at least it should be, the basis of American democracy. After all, our elected officials, for the most part, are members of our community who are answering the call to public service. The candidates you have heard from so far and will continue to be hearing from in our forums are small business owners, teachers, farmers, and other average members of our community. In his Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln called our form of government a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. A government, of the peop uh, a government by the people means that we here and our friends and our relatives and our neighbors, all of us, we are the government. Those elected officials in Washington, D.C., Indianapolis, and even uh, downtown Bloomington, they're just our employees. They work for us. And, the, the, and they ask us to be rehired every uh, two, four, or six years, depending on their term of office. I'm sad to say, however, that the grassroots nature of our government is under attack. Recently, the Supreme Court, in its infinite wisdom, ruled that the corporations have a right to spend as much money as they want in order to help a candidate of their choice. The danger of this ruling is that the, the big corporations, with their immense wealth, could very well turn our government into a government of the people by the corporations and for the corporations. There are some members, of course, who are working to draft legislation that would correct the situation, but we can't afford to wait. We can't afford to wait until that legislation is written, passed, and signed into law. The process is ju just takes too long, and the elections coming up in November will be long over by the time that happens. Fortunately, we the people do have an advantage over the corporations. Corporations, you see, can't go door to door talking to, to talk to their neighbors about issues that concern them. But we can. Yes? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear you. Well, yes? <laughs> yes, yes, we can. We can uh, corporations can't call our uh, friends and relatives and ask them to call, our re call their representatives about important le legislation. But we can. Yes? Yeah. Yes, and we did. We did just yesterday, as I'm sure you all know, the House of Representatives passed historic legislation that will finally be begin to fix our broken health care system. Make no mistake about it. This legislation passed despite the millions of dollars spent to spread disinformation, misinformation, and outright lies in order to defeat it. But uh, despite that, because we called our representatives and we told everyone we know and even people we didn't, don't know to uh, call their representatives, the, and we reminded them that they work for us, not the big oil companies, not the big banks, and not the insurance companies. But our work is not done. The legislation that just passed is far from perfect, 
Most importantly, there is no public option which is vital to keeping the insurance companies honest. We need, therefore, to be, keep calling our members of Congress and keep up the pressure to get the job done. We need to do this. We must do it because we are the ones that we have been waiting for. Now, uh, tonight we will be uh, uh, tonight's forum, which is being taped by Cats for a future broadcast, are the candidates for Indiana State Treasurer, State Auditor, and Secretary of State. Uh, but uh, before we get into the actual program, however, I'd like to uh, recognize a couple members of our, uh, the Board of Directors that are here in the audience. Uh, uh, Kimberly Glassman, our Vice Chair, and, uh, and Jeffrey McKim, our, our Secretary. Also, in the, in the audience, uh, we have uh, uh, some a couple of elected officials. We have uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff McKim, who is uh, President of the Monroe County Council and Mark Stoops, member of the uh, uh, Monroe, Monroe County Commissioner. Have I gotten all elected officials? Okay. And there are also some uh, candidates who will not be appearing on tonight's forum. Uh, we have uh, Mike Sakaley, candidate for recorder. Craig Harvey, candidate for clerk of the circuit court. Linda Robbins, candidate for clerk of the, the circuit court and Terry Robbins, candidate for Van Buren Township uh, tr Trustee. The format for tonight's uh, forum is fairly simple. First up will be uh, uh, Peter Buttigieg, the candidate for treasurer. He will have 10 minutes to speak, after which he will take questions from the audience. You can just walk right up to that microphone there and, uh, and uh, ask your question. Um, and then this procedure will be uh, will be repeated for uh, our candidate for auditor Sam Locke, and then each of the candidates for Secretary of State Tom McKenna and Vop Ossley will be given ten minutes to speak. After uh, once they have both spoken, they will sit at this table and take uh, questions from the audience. In all of the Q and A uh, periods, the questioners will be limited to 30 seconds to ask their questions, and the candidates will be given uh, two minutes. Uh, two